Welcome to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm here in New York City, and this is the 13th day of August 2019. We do want to thank each of you for listening to this show, making it one of the more popular shows. I want to also encourage you to send your questions and comments along to questionsfortaylor at gmail.com. Questions, the number for taylor at gmail.com. And we most certainly want to thank our sponsors for making this show economically viable. Klondike Gold, Novo Resources, Radisson Mining Resources, and Great Bear Resources are the sponsors for this week's show. I've titled today's show, Myths About Gold as an Investment Medium. James Turk, Peter Talman, and Michael Oliver are my guests this week. Mainstream investment pros are starting to buy gold to hedge their equity portfolios. But most investment pros hate gold, given their training in Keynesian economics. Keynes called gold a barbaric relic because it stood in the way of the elitist socialist economists manipulating markets for their advantage against the common man. A pack of lies spread by Keynes regarding gold lies on the minds of, lives on the minds of virtually everybody, all investors, in fact, today, because virtually everybody, at least all college educated folks, even high school educated people, have been trained in Keynesian economics. What are the common fallacies about gold that can cost you dearly if you follow Keynesian economics? James Turk will be with me in the second half of today's show to help clarify falsehoods about investing in gold that can cost you uh, dearly in your uh, investment portfolios. Today's down day in gold notwithstanding, this is one of the most exciting times in the junior gold mining sector that I have experienced since I started writing my newsletter back in the middle of October 1981. Current sponsors of this show, Great Bear, Klondike Gold, Novo Resources, and Radisson Mining, all have exciting prospects and projects, gold projects that they're working on. For example, last week, Klondike Gold announced one of the most spectacular gold drill intercepts I have seen in all these years. Specifically, the company intersected 1,009 grams of gold and 1,035 grams of silver over a one-meter intersection on the company's Klondike Gold Exploration Project in the famous Yukon gold fields. In 2017, Gold uh, Novo Gold discovered a most spectacular gold nugget field in a massive conglomerate gold project that Quentin Henning's team at Novo Resources are now developing. Last week, we spoke with Chris Taylor, the president of Great Bear Resources, on this show to update us on that company's massive high-grade Red Lake gold discovery, only to find out from Chris that they've made a new discovery, a new exciting discovery that could be equal to the one they've already found uh, in the Red Lake Red Lake region of Ontario. Now, Great Bear Resources uh, entered my newsletter at $0.40. Cents. It's currently over $4 a share. Just this morning, I received a call from Hubert Perrant Bouchard of Radisson Mining. He called to tell me that the company's current drill program has penetrated 150 meters below the high-grade section that they have, uh, that, or, that they've currently drilled and is in their resource uh in their resource uh, calculations. Now, next week we expect to have core core results, at least to see the core, whether or not we have assays next week, I'm not quite clear, but very soon we will have. And right now we are in a position and a time in the uh, exploration, the gold exploration, silver exploration sectors, when drill results really do drive the stock prices. So I've been paying a lot of attention in my newsletter now, focusing on companies and trying to keep my subscribers up to date as to when the next drill results are coming out because they are really the drivers that are causing these stocks to move very dramatically. It's, as I say, one of the most exciting times I've experienced in all these years. Uh, go to miningstocks.com. You can sign up for my newsletter to keep up to date with this uh, these developments uh, on a weekly basis. Now, during the second segment of today's show, I will be playing my interview with Peter Talman. He's a geologist and the CEO of Klondike Gold. He will discuss that spectacular intercept of 1,009 grams of gold that I just mentioned. And then, as I mentioned during the uh, last segment of today's show, uh, James Turk will be with me to talk about the myths about gold as an investment that the mainstream have basically been propagating for uh, for their own selfish ends, quite frankly. But right now, I'm really happy to tell you that Michael Oliver is with me once again to help us sort out The gold markets on a day when we have seen a considerable amount of volatility in the yellow metal, 
And um, Michael put out a report, a very interesting report today, titled Urgency, Evident on the Tape, end of quote. Thanks for joining me again, Michael. Hi, Jay. Good to be back. Good to be back, and it's always good to tell our listeners it's OliverMSA.com, OliverMSA.com, to uh, fully partake of the wisdom and the uh, and the years of experience that Michael has built up into his own proprietary products that he makes available for a very reasonable fee. Um, Michael, what about this report you put out today? You know, I normally think of you as a very dispassionate, you always are, basically. You're analytical. You don't let your emotions dictate your actions, and you make sure that your subscribers aren't being whipsawed around by emotions. Uh, share with us today, what's your thinking, and why did you put out this kind of unusual report from you, urgency, evident on the tape? Well, the uh, asset categories uh, are engaging in a big way, particularly two of them, the T-bond market, uh, government, long-term government debt market, and the gold market. Uh, and they're going vertical. <laughs> they've not edged up. They've, it, it's been a, uh, an ascent that's like a missile. And the question then is, okay, well, what are they anticipating? Uh, everything's good, right? The Fed's going to cut rates. They're back in line with the ECB, BOJ, so that's good for the stock market category. And uh, now we have uh, Trump apparently and the Chinese government as well probably upset by their own domestic problems. Uh, and wishing to solve the trade thing, at least in some manner, way, or form, where it looks like it's solved. Um, And Mm -hmm. so we get good news there. So those are two big news issues that were dark, and now they're not dark, right? Okay, Plus the stock valley. Okay. Well, how come it is that if T-bonds and gold, which have been going vertical, uh, money moving out of the stock market into those asset categories, um, why is it they didn't get clobbered today? Yeah. Now, when I say get clobbered, gold's down five dollars from yesterday's <laughs> close. Yeah, it's off yeah. the high of the morning, but it is down five dollars, so well off the low of the day. And T bonds are pressing more toward the upper end of the daily range than the lower end, and they're mm-hmm. hardly you know down a quarter point or so in the day. So, how come it is that they aren't flinching to the downside like stocks mm-hmm. are to the upside? Yeah. They still have; they're made of steel. <laughs> they're still acting like something is going on, urgent. Uh, again, if they had been rallying. Uh, like uh, we we got bullish on T bonds back in December, they were 141 at the time. Now they're 163. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the advance from that 141 level last December to now was to the slow pace, I wouldn't make that point. But in the recent weeks, gold and T bonds have, have literally gone vertical, and they're not giving it up despite this news today. So I'm arguing that they're anticipating something out there. And I think that something is that the stock market does finally snap, uh, especially after good news comes out. That's the best time to snap. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's hard for me to remember a major stock top that went down on dark news. Dark news always came later. Mm -hmm. It might have been bubbling below the surface, but it wasn't the headline. And our headlines have been, well, the Fed has uh, been raising rates, and now, of course, they're lowering, so that's out of the way. And the trade deal is now they're going to come up with something, I'm pretty sure, because both sides need it. Uh, And so that's out of the way. So everything's blue sky, right? Well, how come Mm -hmm. T-bonds and gold don't anticipate that Mm -hmm. uh, by doing the Mm -hmm. opposite? So I still think there's something going on there, Uh, and not just the upside in the markets, but the nature of the upside. There's an urgency. Right. So my bet is the S and P's rally is uh, a fitful, another fitful rally uh, that doesn't achieve sustainability. And I've got numbers below the market that aren't all that far below. That if, if they see them, they're going to go down fast. Yeah, and they'll do and of course, uh, <laughs> and of course, those those numbers are revealed to your subscribers, and uh, right. they're very, very they're, valuable. Uh, I know to to keep track of that. Uh, Michael, with just about a minute and a half or so left here, let me ask you, uh, you know, a lot of price technicians are saying, yeah, well, you know, we need a big, we, we need a big uh, correction in gold here. It's a way overdue. What's your response to that? Well, we, we did a report on that over the weekend, and frankly, I don't see the, uh, at, at the current level, low 1500s, I don't see the r- rationale for it here when I look at our momentum studies. You get in the upper 1500s, and I can maybe at that point begin to see a justification for a congestion or some kind of pullback. Nothing serious, but at least some kind of stall with a correction in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still think gold on this big surge that began, well, on the price charts at least, began from the mid-1300s. 
that we're going to 1700 area before there's any serious correction. So what uh-huh. I'm talking about in the upper 1500s is not a serious correction, but something that people might be, you know, upset by, especially if they've got time sensitive instruments like options sure. or something like that. Sure. Uh, but I just don't well, see the technical justification. Uh, at these yeah, levels. and yeah, and what I should uh, remind my my listeners is that, of course. You send these reports out whenever it's urgent, whatever it's necessary to do so. So if you see some changes taking place in real time, you let your subscribers, your paid subscribers know about that. Our listeners right. here hear you once a week. People who subscribe to you are constantly being given information that's very, very valuable in terms of trading their portfolios. So I just want my, my listeners to realize that. It's OliverMSA.com, folks. Go there to learn more about Michael. And then, by the way, there's some free stuff and a very good – uh, video there that Michael explains why he thinks the equity market's in big trouble, and also uh, you learn a lot about his methodology, which is uh, really what's given me the confidence. That, along with the fact that the results have been so darn good since I've been watching and following Michael's work. Michael, thank you so much for being with us again. Always a pleasure. You're always a value here. Thank you so much. 